welcome America to New York City. And uh, thank you for joining us live uh, streaming across uh, the internet. Uh, we appreciate you. There's thousands of you who are holding uh, uh, thousands of house parties or gatherings across the country uh, tonight. And, um, and there's anywhere from two to 30 people. Uh, I know there are some churches and union halls and others who've got 100 people there. So uh, there's uh, uh, untold tens of thousands of people across America tonight who have uh, either just watched this film or just joined us here for this live uh, discussion and uh, question and answer session. So thank you for that. And, um, and we have a, an audience with us here uh, on West 23rd Street in uh, New York City. Uh, the security people said don't give up the address. <laughs> uh, I know. It was like it was irony built on top of other irony. So. Um, anyways, I want to introduce the, uh, our panel that's going to be here with us tonight. And uh, I'm going to say a few words, they're going to say a few words, and then we're going to take your questions. The main thing we want to come out of this evening is action. Um, we are tired of talking about this. I'm tired of it. I made this movie. Uh, actually, I started making this movie um, um, 14 years ago, and um, and so uh, the time is now for action. The people that are gathered with us here in New York, that's what we want to do, and we know that you at home uh, feel the same way. So we're going to talk about some specific things that we can do tonight about this problem and, and what we can do this week. Uh, but first, I want to introduce you the, the people that are, are here on the panel. Uh, next to me here uh, is Rob Wilcox. Rob's cousin, uh, Laura Wilcox, uh, was shot to death uh, in uh, Nevada City, California, about uh, 11, 12 years ago, somewhere, I think, there, 12 years ago. Uh, she was a college student, and uh, during her uh, uh, um, holiday vacation, Christmas vacation, um, she liked to go down and volunteer at the uh, social work, the county social work and mental health services. And, and one day, um, the uh, brother of a local police officer uh, de decided to come in and try and kill as many people as he could uh, there, and he uh, took her life. And Rob has been a strong advocate uh, for gun control and is, and is, uh, for the last uh, decade or so. He's her cousin, and uh, we're honored to have you here tonight. So thank you very much. Uh, Jamie Pesson is with a group uh, that is formed across the country. It's called Moms Demand Action. And uh, this is a group of parents. Uh, I have to say that uh, one of the, um, I've received a lot of letters since uh, Newtown from different people uh, about this uh, subject, about the tragedy that happened in Newtown. And there became a recurring theme uh, in these uh, letters. And that was that um, um, parents, now, since December, when they um, drop their kids off at school in the morning, have this horrible feeling. They don't want to really say it out loud, but they've written it to me, and I've read it. I can't tell you how many letters I've read this, where the mother or the father says, now I have this horrible feeling when, I, when they get out of the car and I watch them walk down the sidewalk and into the school building, I have to now sit in my car and ask myself, is that the last time I'm going to see them? Um, nobody in this country should ever have to feel that way taking their kids to school. And um, so thank you, uh, Jamie and the others who are here with, uh, with Moms of Demand Action because I think that uh, this is where we're going to succeed by organizing parents uh, who are sick and tired of this uh, continuing in this country. Um, next to uh, Jamie, uh, we have Lori Haas who's uh, here from uh, Virginia. And um, her daughter uh, was shot uh, during the Virginia Tech uh, mass shooting, uh, the largest uh, mass shooting at a school in our history. And uh, I think 38 uh, students and 32. Uh, how many? 32, 32 uh, students and, and uh, some faculty died. Um, uh, Lori's daughter was uh, shot twice uh, in the head. In spite of that, she was able to get on her cell phone, call 911 and keep the, the phone open while the shooter was killing people in, in the classroom so that the, the police could find their way uh, in there. Um, amazingly, uh, Lori's daughter survived and is a real hero of that day. 
And at the bottom, we have my fellow Michigander, uh, who now lives in Washington, D.C., uh, Garland Gilchrist, and he is the National Campaign Director for MoveOn.org. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, so I just, I'm going to say a few words, and then I'm gonna, we're going to put some things up on the, uh, on the screen here uh, about uh, um, the action that we can take. But I'd like to just share with you some of the things that you can talk to, uh, to your neighbors, your coworkers, friends, family, fellow classmates. Um, you know, we are the majority, the people that are against this gun violence. We're not the minority. And, um, but, you know, murder has been around uh, since Cain and Abel, uh, and we'll never eliminate uh, all murder, but we can drastically reduce it, as they have in almost every other first world democracy by passing some very simple laws. An assault weapons ban, a ban on high capacity ammo magazines, background checks on everyone who buys a gun, and more free mental health services in this country. As Yoko Ono pointed out earlier this week on the Piers Morgan Show, over one million Americans, specifically 1,057,000 Americans, have been killed by guns since John Lennon was shot and killed in this city on December 8, 1980. 1,057,000 murders, suicides, and accidental shootings. This is appalling and shameful, and it must end. There are almost 100 million Americans, though, who own guns. 100 million Americans. That means there's 200 million Americans who don't own guns. The, the NRA, has over 4 million members. That means there's 304 million Americans who are not members of the NRA. We are the majority. We should start acting like it. Most importantly, the politicians had better start treating us that way and immediately start responding to the will of the people. It should be noted that 99% of gun owners will never commit a violent act with their gun. And if you're watching and you are a gun owner, let me say this, nobody wants to take your guns away Nobody wants to stop you from shooting Bambi. It's, <laughs> that's not what this issue is about, and you know it. And that's why even a majority of NRA members now want these background checks, want these uh, bans or controls on the amount of uh, bullets that can be in these magazines. Anybody who is a hunter knows this. You don't need 30 bullets to shoot a deer. You don't need 100 bullets to shoot a deer. If you do need a hundred bullets to shoot a deer, let me say as a hunter, please get out of the woods. You are a serious danger to all of us. We want to join hands with all NRA members who are sane and rational and believe that we should have sensible gun control laws in this country. So here's what the recent polls have said since Newtown. 57% of Americans, 57% want assault weapons banned. 91% want background checks on all gun purchases, including all gun shows. Every single uh, piece of proposed gun legislation now has the majority support of the American people. There is no excuse for Congress not to pass these laws. It took Great Britain and Australia only one gun massacre with victims in the, in the dozens for each country to have their legislators pass strict gun laws. We have had almost 30 of these gun massacres just since Columbine, and zero gun laws. The total number of murders in Britain in 2010, 27. In Australia, 30. In Japan, 11 in 2008. 11 people in a nation of 100 million people. So I just want to close here by saying, before we open this up, that I think we're better than this. We're Americans. For over 200 years, people have chosen to come here to escape violence and depression and to live a better, happier, and safer life. We need to pause and examine why we use so much violence and why it seems to be a matter of our government's policy, starting with unnecessary wars, the death penalty, uh, why it took forever to pass a domestic violence bill when every 15 seconds in this country a woman is assaulted. Every 15 seconds. 
We live in a violent country. We are a violent people. And maybe the first step in this is to admit that, that it's not just random crazy people who are violent. It's, it's, it's we have it as our national policy to solve, as the kids in Canada said, why do you just want to solve all your problems through violence? That's, I think, one of the most important questions because I think we've created this, this culture that won't change even as much as we all want these gun laws to pass, and they need to pass, and, and someone's not going to be able to go into a schoolroom and, and massacre so many kids with these big uh, magazines of, of bullets. But ultimately, unless we address the other issues of poverty, racism, mental health, and these things that create the climate and the culture for going to the methods of violence that happen in this country, I don't think ultimately we're going to fix the problem. So I think there has, this is my own personal feeling, and you just saw it in the film, that I think that there's a larger issue that we need to continue to deal with. Tonight, we're here to discuss a specific issue, and that's to get our United States Congress off their butts and enacting laws now. Not next year, not the year after that, now. And you know, I've got to tell you, they all thought that a week after Newtown, it'll just leave everyone's mind. No. no. Not this no. time. No. No. Didn't happen, did it? No. It hasn't left anyone's mind. Just as I said, all the, par the parents that write me that drop the kids off at school every day, it's on everyone's mind. And to the politicians, and if there's any elected official who might actually be watching this, we haven't forgotten. And we're not going to forget this time. We actually feel pretty bad that we let Columbine just go by and went on to our other problems, that we let uh, Virginia Tech go by, that we let Aurora go by, and on and on and on. And I, the people here tonight are gathered here, and you at home need to speak with a loud and clear voice to our Congress, mm -hmm. that we are not going to get, stop thinking about this. We're actually going to start acting on it. We want change, and we want it now. We don't want incremental change. We want real change that will reduce gun violence in this country. Yeah. So, um, so we up here on the stage, and uh, I'm going to turn over these guys in a second. Here. We've come up with three things that we would like you to do tonight. Those of you sitting here uh, in the theater, and those of you at home uh, watching this. And so, if you could get out uh, either your uh, cell phone, iPhone, BlackBerry. If you're at home and you're on a laptop, uh, you know whatever uh, computer uh, device you have. We were very uh, impressed with the responses, as, as I said at the beginning of the movie here tonight, uh, where so many people uh, sent a, a Twitter message to Senator Harry Reid. He came out on Tuesday and said, you know, we're not gonna have the, gun, the assault uh, ban vote. We're just not gonna do it. Because you know, we don't, we don't have the numbers and, and they'll just filibuster us. And, 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 and people will have to stand and talk for like hours and we'll have to sit there and listen. And, 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 I mean, right? How many times have we had to watch Democrats, without a spine, stand there and behave like that? We are sick and tired of it. And so I asked on the show the other night that millions of people send a message to Harry Reid. Uh, that happened. Others joined in. Other people on other networks joined in. You joined in. And within 48 hours, he said he's going to allow a vote on the assault weapons ban. He will continue to try and dance around it, because he won't put it in the, in the big bill. He's going to just let a, allow an amendment vote. But we have to stay on him, and, and of course, 100% the of the Republicans uh, who will, are committed to not making any of these changes. But, you know, they're representatives of the people, and I think they like to get reelected. And we have to make sure that they know that they won't be reelected uh, if they continue down this road of ignoring Newtown and all these other uh, tragic events. So, um, our little committee here and the other good people that move on, um, this is what we're going to do. It's very simple. There's, um, there's about, I think right now, six Democrats, Democratic senators, who uh, said that they will not vote uh, to ban assault weapons. They will join with the Republicans. Hmm. There may be even a few more. And so we thought tonight, well, you know, should we try, like, try and get a hold of all of them tonight while we're here? Uh, <laughs> 
It's a Saturday night. Uh, uh, they're on recess now. They're, they're all gone from D.C. But that makes it actually better because all of you watching at home, that means all of your congressional representatives and the senators are all home this week. They're all there. They're back in Michigan and Montana and California and every place else. And what better time, as we learned from the Tea Party a couple years ago, than to go and visit your representative while they're vacationing at home. So this is what we want to do. We want everybody watching tonight, and uh, people in here, you can do this, uh, maybe when you go home, you can start it now if you want. But write down eight to ten names of people uh, that, that you would like to have. We want, you to encourage, we want to encourage you to form your own little pack. All right, not the packs like all these, uh, you know, Citizens United uh, uh, business, but, but um, uh, maybe it's just the people on your block. Maybe it's the people at work. Maybe it's uh, students in a class or whatever. But I think, we think, that if you uh, can form your own group, and we don't have to think of this as a massive thing, just 10 people, 10 people. If the 100,000 people uh, who are going to watch this tonight across the, uh, the four time zones, um, uh, each did this with 10 people, well, 10 times 100,000, now we've got a million. So, uh, so we really want to encourage you uh, to do this and to form this with people you know. Um, and especially try to include people that maybe aren't necessarily political people. Because I don't, if you've talked to people about this issue since Newtown, there's not much dissension or disagreement, is there? When you bring this up at work or, or school or whatever. So, so um, invite them to become part of your own you know, you know, community committee against gun violence. And you can go to the moveon.org website, um, where, which is moveon.org, uh, and then slash uh, end gun violence and gun violence. Move on.org slash end gun violence. And there will be helpful tips for you there over the next few days on how you can form your local group in your town. It's hard to be living in a place like you know, Boise, Idaho. You sit there and you go, what can I do here? I got these two senators, I got this crazy Republican congressman, what can I do? Um, there's a lot of things that we can collectively do together, but, but we're so defeated by this issue because for how many umpteen decades now have we tried to get things through? and the NRA has blocked this. We need to understand that we are bigger than the NRA. They may have more money, but we have the numbers. Um, and then the third thing we'd like you to do tonight, um, actually to do it on Monday, when, when your district representative, your congressional representative office opens, is uh, to uh, call them at their local number. Do not call the DC number. Call the local number. I've had congressmen tell me that a um, 100 calls to their DC office uh, has nowhere near the impact of 20 calls to their local office. Make the call to the local, and plus they're home this week, so make the call to the local office of your elected congressional representative and your senators. Call them on Monday. We want to see thousands of phone calls happening across the country. This does have impact. These things work, but only, only when massive numbers of people do it. So we're inviting you to do this tonight. We're, we're asking you to join us and do this. And now I want to be quiet and talk to let people here say a few words, and then we'll take uh, your questions. So thank you for doing these three things, OK? And uh, thank you at home for doing this. Um, well, Rob, why don't we uh, start with you? Um, and uh, I, uh, I, Rob, of course, his cousin was Laura, uh, who was killed in Nevada City, California. Um, so you've been speaking, you've been doing lobbying, you've been helping different groups to, you know, do something in the last decade. Uh, after Newtown, uh, what do you think now is the thing that, uh, that we can do that will get these laws passed? And, wh and how hopeful are you? I, uh, I'm incredibly hopeful. I'm more hopeful now than in the, in the 12 years that I've been involved in this movement. And, and I think it's because there's been a long period of silence over uh, the 2000s, when things honestly, legislatively got worse. And the culture that Michael talks about in the film was, well, was made more violent by the NRA and their agenda. You know, one of the things they did, as everyone knows, was encourage everyone to carry a concealed weapon. Because their answer to gun violence was more guns. And their answer to a tense situation was to stand your ground. So that your very worst impulse became your first reaction. That was, those are the things they did. Not only did that, they 
immunize the gun manufacturers and the gun dealers from being subject to legal lawsuits. There are, what other industries are, are federally where, where the citizens are prohibited from suing uh, an industry for, uh, say, something that caused uh, harm or death? There's only one. It is just guns, isn't it? It's just That's guns. Thought, yeah. And you know, the other, the other thing that guns have been able to do is that there's only two industries where the Consumer Product Safety Commission is not allowed to regulate them for child safety. One is guns, and the other is tobacco. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> but I think after this time period where, where it was hard and we did see these, this kind of change towards the NRA, you know, what we've seen since Virginia Tech, and then Aurora, and then Oak Creek, then Newtown, is you've seen people say enough. And I think we're all here in this room together, and there's people watching who have said enough. They yeah, say People have had it. They've had it. They say, I don't think that it makes sense to be able to sell a gun without a background check. I don't think anyone should be able to walk into a store and get a military-style assault weapon in a 100-round clip. And then the answer, then the question is, well, why aren't we going to do anything about it? Why are the senators and Congress people so scared? Well, the answer, I think, as Michael pointed out in the film, is pretty simple. There are the money lobbyists standing behind these congressmen, pushing them to do the wrong thing. Why will that change? Because there's 4 million NRA members, there's a handful of gun manufacturers, and there's hundreds of millions of us who said, no longer am I going to see my loved ones gunned down. No longer am I going to drop my kids off with the um, Thanks, Rob. Uh, Garland, uh, what do you, now, uh, Garland, of course, is a, one of the top people at MoveOn.org. Um, you guys have been involved in many issues before, been very successful in organizing millions of people and getting them out. And, um, you know, we are a different country in many good ways than we were uh, 10 or 12 uh, years ago. Um, and I give a lot of credit to, to move on for that. What are you going to do now, though, to um, lead this movement? Because, we, see, we don't have an organization like the NRA. We don't have something as massive and as well-funded as that. There's nothing comparable to that on our side. And so, you're it. <laughs> well, first off, thank you uh, to all the MoveOn members who are here in this room and who have been participating online through activity and action over years and years and years. That power inspires me to believe that we can win this, this battle. We can win this debate. We can beat the NRA, we can beat the gun manufacturers, that they, we can beat all these people. And the way that we can do it, conversations matter. Conversations that happen in living rooms matter. People organizing one another, that's what Move On's all about. And this gun violence prevention movement that has really sprung into a, to a different level since Newtown, but that has been activated time after time after time, tragedy after tragedy after tragedy, will continue to grow as long as we continue to work together with, as one, with one another. The conversations we're asking people to have in their living rooms to start these community committees against gun violence, they lead to real victories. We've had real victories at the local level and at the state level all across the country. The state of Colorado just passed some of the most important gun violence prevention legislation that's been passed anywhere in the country. That's in Colorado. That was unthinkable six months ago. Six months ago, that was unthinkable. We can make the impossible possible. Things become possible when people take action. We have movement members that have organized in extraordinary ways. Take, for example, a group in Tucson, Arizona that got their city in Arizona to ban gun shows that don't guarantee background checks. That's because people organize. That's because they said, you know what, this is the last time I want to wake up and see some tragedy on the news. This is the last time I want to be related to a person that was hurt by gun violence. Culture and politics influence one another, and we can change both. So Move On members have stepped up. We've joined this vibrant and powerful gun violence prevention movement. We're happy to be a part of it, and Move On members are going to continue to fight in that struggle. Thank you, Thank you, Can you also tell people what happened in Chicago a couple weeks ago? There was a special congressional election for uh, Jesse Jackson's junior's uh, seat, and, um, and the uh, candidate, the Democrat, was in the lead and had the 100% backing of the NRA. Can you just tell us what happened there? Absolutely. So again, uh, there was a special election in Chicago for Rep uh, Representative Jesse Jackson Jr.'s 
congressional seat in the Illinois 2nd District. And there were a lot of Democrats running for that seat, but two in particular had the highest possible rating for the NRA. And to tell you what that means is that every time the NRA had a policy position, that politician had the same policy position. Well, a lot of groups uh, thought that the NRA shouldn't be winning elections after due time. The NRA shouldn't be winning elections, period, but especially after such a tragedy. So people came together in Chicago, in Illinois 2nd District, and all over the country to say, we weren't going to let the, the NRA win another election. And that worked. That worked. The group like Mayors Against Legal Guns, the Brady Campaign, Move On members in, in the district and across the country stepped up and said, we're going to do everything we can. We're going to provide muscle. We're going to provide volunteers. People raised money. People donated money to make sure that the NRA lost their first election since Newtown, their first election since 2013. And Mayor Bloomberg has pledged his entire bank account for the seven. Is that correct? Uh, I hear something about that, or is that? I haven't heard that, but uh, you can probably call him and find out. Well, don't give me an idea of it yet, because we're we have lots of folks in here and we're live, so. Uh, Yes, I'm going to think about this while we go to the next person. Um, Lori Haas, uh, your daughter, uh, a hero there on that day at uh, Virginia Tech. Um, you have been very active and very busy. Uh, uh, the, the grief and sadness and depression and everything that certainly accompanies any parent whose child is wounded or killed in an event like this. Uh, I, well, most of us can't imagine it. I can, you know, it's just can't imagine it. Um, what, uh, what has... Tell the crowd, because we were talking backstage here, about what you've been doing and, and what your group has uh, uh, been doing. Um, hello. I think I don't have... Yeah. Um, hello. I'm um, honored and humbled to be here with this group on this stage. I am um, been working on gun violence prevention uh, since the tragedy at Virginia Tech. There are 32 families whose loved ones were killed. They weren't lost. They were killed because someone had access to a firearm they shouldn't have. He had been adjudicated mentally ill and he shouldn't have been able to buy a firearm. Uh, 17 other students were injured and shot, including my daughter, and, and seven were injured jumping out the window facing the gunman coming through the door or jumping out a second story window. Uh, I've been working on this issue since then. I now work for the Coalition to Stop Gun Violence. I am absolutely convinced that there has been a monumental shift in the um, commitment, the attitude, and the frustration, and the we will have no more attitude of American people on this issue. I have always felt that I was in the majority, clearly in the majority. Who wouldn't do whatever it takes to stop gun violence? Who would want their family member to get that phone call, come pick up your dead child? You know, it, it is atrocious in this country that we live in a culture, as Michael has suggested, a culture that allows children to murder children. It, it, it's astonishing to me. It's, it's, it's unacceptable. And, you know, I will do anything and everything I can to stop the gun violence uh, that permeates every fabric of society. It, it, it's everywhere. You know, it's people killing themselves, people killing their neighbors. Can't go to a grocery store, a movie theater, a college campus, and now an elementary school without fear of being mowed down by somebody who should not have access to firearms. You know, the difference in these cultures in these developed countries is clearly the access to firearms by people who are dangerous, by criminals and terrorists and domestic abusers. In states across America, where we have closed the private sale loophole, i.e. we require a background check on all buyers. Domestic violence by intimate partners has been reduced 38%. Now, how many women's lives have been saved because we require a simple background check? Suicides in those states have gone down 49%. It is clearly working. When you do a background check on all buyers, you're stopping dangerous individuals, criminals, and those who would do harm to others. We have got to do a better job. We have got to care more about our fellow man. We've got to care 
that we have allowed this culture to permeate. And I would just like to say one more thing about the NRA and the myth, you know, of their influence. We can puncture that myth. Michael is correct. It's four million. And frankly, three out of four of those members want to have a background check on all buyers. They're with us. Responsible gun owners understand the responsibility of having a lethal weapon in their hands and what it can do in the wrong hands. In a state like Virginia, we're purple, we're as purple as it gets, a candidate can win. Tim Kaine ran for mayor, ran for lieutenant governor, ran for governor, and ran for the state, this uh, U.S. Senate with an F rating from the NRA and won every elected office he attended. In Virginia. In Virginia. Imagine that. The NRA spent $700,000 against Tim Kaine, and it didn't work. We know we're on the moral side of this issue. We know what it takes to stop people from killing our children, killing our neighbors, killing our friends, killing our coworkers. So let's get it done, and let's everybody in this audience, everybody listening, everybody watching, please raise your voice. We can no longer be the silent majority. We have to be the very, very loud majority. Thank you. Well, thank you. Very much. Uh, uh, Jamie, uh, uh, moms demand action. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to throw you a, just a question that's been on my mind for some time uh, since I made this movie. And it was a, it was after I, we left the edit room and you know we retired. We just had to get the film done because we had to get to the Cannes Film Festival. And and after it was finished, you know, a few months later, I, I every time I see the film, this, the question is in my head. And I think, why didn't I put this in there? It's probably well, you know, I'm a guy, maybe it might be some of it, but uh, you know, I think I'm a you know a decent kind of guy. But uh, um, how come with all of these gun shootings, these massacres, how come we never see a woman go into a school, a mall, a church, um, a, a store, a workplace, and just spray bullets all over the place? Because you know, we're the minority, us guys, you know, we're like 48, 49% of the population, we're 51%, and yet uh, there's just some weird thing about this, why women uh, don't do this, and um, and when we leave here tonight, anybody who's, if you're going to walk down a dark street tonight, and you know, we're in New York City, maybe your radar's up a little bit, you got to be, you know, you're cautious. Uh, what do you, what are we thinking in our heads? What are we trying to be cautious of? Do we imagine a, a woman's going to jump out of the bushes and uh, hurt us, shoot us? Uh, it's not that, is it? And yet, I, this this gender part of this just I don't know. It never gets raised. It wasn't raised by me. And um, uh, your mom's group. Um, uh, it's like why do I feel completely safe that no mom is going to shoot me? <laughs> Not sure I can answer that question. All right, exactly. we'll turn it over to the audience. <laughs> um, we're a very nice group of moms. We do not harm people, really. Um, I can tell you that this is very much an issue, not just for moms, but women in general. I saw a statistic recently that women are five times more likely to be killed by their abusers if there is a gun in the house. It's appalling to me that domestic abusers can so easily access weapons in this country. There was a great article in the New York Times recently showing that when judges issue restraining orders against usually men um, in these situations, they are allowed federally to take to have the people turn in their firearms, which seems to make a good deal of sense if a woman is fearing for her life. They don't do that. Judges in most states do not do that. And it's appalling to me. Um, in the same way, Newtown is just appalling isn't even a word. There's not, there's not a word for what happened there. Um, our group is different than some of the other groups up here in that we are very new. We formed um, by a mom in Indiana who started a Facebook page the day after what happened in Sandy Hook. And she didn't think anything. I mean, she was just looking for like-minded mothers. And she didn't know what would come of it. And we now have 80,000 members, 38 chapters around the country. A mom in Indiana started this. A mom in Indiana and started this. How many chapters? I think 38, 38 states, I'm sorry, but there are wow. way, may, many, many more chapters in 38 states around the country. 38 states. It, including South Carolina, 
including North Dakota, Montana, places where you wouldn't necessarily expect them to be popping up. And that's been one of the most interesting things we've learned is that most of us are accidental activists. I've never done anything like this before in my life. Um, none of the other moms, none of them, most of the other moms haven't done anything Not like political this. people. No. And we were very moved and motivated by what happened in Newtown. You know, as mothers, it's horrifying to imagine that your kids can go, you drop your kids off at school and you may not be able to take them home. It's just beyond unacceptable and you know, it's unimaginable. It's unimaginable. And I think a lot of people like me couldn't, couldn't function in the days after that event. Um, I have a four and a half year old who goes to an elementary school and I could not function until I got involved. Mm -hmm. Anybody else, else have that, else have that same feeling or know people that, yeah. that, yeah. And that's what's been so incredible is that we've been able to reach so many women mostly, although we do have a dad's chapter as well around the country. Um, who, <laughs> um, we've been able to reach so many people. Um, and I encourage other parents who want to get involved to check out our website. It's momsdemandaction.org. We have a similar mission in terms of getting people to act. We want people to act. So we will make it easy for you. We'll send you an email. We'll tell you who to tweet, who to call, who to email, who to knock on their door and show up in their office. Uh, thank you for creating this movement. I mean, you're a friend in Indiana. That I personally, I think this is the key. I think moms, and especially people who have not been political, people who just want to drop their kid off at school and feel safe. Um, I think I think that you, the power that you have, that all mothers have and dads uh, in this country, far far supersedes whatever the NRA thinks that they have in terms of power. There are 80 million mothers in this country as compared to the four million members of the NRA. Wow. wow. So doesn't answer my question. If there's 80 million moms, why are there? There's, I just. Mm, what is it? Money. Yeah. Well, we're going to turn it over to the audience here. Some questions, and you at home, uh, you can uh, 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 tweet your questions to us. Um, actually, if you just if you use the hashtag again, DFC question, uh, we'll be able um, uh, to pull that up um, on the internet. I have a um, question for you from the Twitter feed. Oh, we'll, we'll start with, uh, where's it from? This is from at Team Centerville 4M. I don't know what it is. But the question is, um, the NRA has a huge educational program to defend its position. Why can't the rest of us also develop a program against gun violence, an educational program against gun violence? Who wants to take that? Um, I, oh my head, poor Don, you know. There are... Uh, literally dozens of um, programs out there and available to the general public by many, many organizations. You know, despite the fact that we don't have a single organization, there is collaboration, cooperation, and commitment um, from many organizations. There's MoveOn.org, there's the Mayors Against Illegal Guns, there is the States United to Prevent Gun Violence, there's Moms Demand Action, there's my organization, the Coalition to Stop Gun Violence, there's the Brady Center, the granddaddy, you know, who's been around for a number of years. Every single organization has a website, has action kits, they have call kits, they have letter writing kits, they have educational tools and resources to tell you some of the statistics in this country. You know, where we have 12,000 persons murdered annually. And those states, some of those statistics that I just suggested that, you know, the policies that reduce gun violence. So there is available to anybody in this room and, and watching as much information as you need or want and um, if there's a question you can't find answered, go to www.csgv.org, that's the Coalition to Stop Gun Violence, and they will put you in touch with me personally and I'll answer your question. We have, um, we also, I just want to point out that we have some residents of Newtown uh, in the audience here uh, in New York uh, tonight, and uh, we've left it up to them. Yes, thank you to those of you who are, are here. Um, and uh, we've left it up to you whether, if you want to say something or pose a question or suggest something to the people across the country who are watching that you're welcome to. And if not, we completely understand. So what's our who's our next question? From the audience here? Hello. I thank you so much for what you're you, what you're doing about this. Um, I'm I'm bringing up something that today we're not ready to focus on because I support what we're focusing on today, the legislative approach. But you said something that gave me some hope about another topic that President Obama also said after Newtown, 
the words mental health. You said it today, and I want to know what you meant. You wanted to see more mental health services available to people. Um, I'm a clinical psychologist in New York City, and that's what I've been thinking about ever since um, Newtown. Um, it's very complicated, and I don't have any concrete suggestions this minute, but we are not dealing with the mental health problems of the United States. I want to be very clear that I don't want us to think of stigmatizing the mentally ill. In my practice in New York City, I work with people of all, with all kinds of difficulties, some of whom are severely mentally ill and would right. not like to hurt a fly. Right, right. And yeah. they just need help. Right, and, yeah. and, and saying that we need to fix the mental illness problem is actually uh, part of the talking points of the NRA. That's how they want to deflect it, uh, uh, the issue. Um, and and I, I think that. yes, and I think it should be pointed out that the man I don't want to mention. I don't like to mention any of the names of these killers uh, uh, for whatever reason. They think that they hope that they'll be remembered for what they did. I don't want them ever to be remembered for at least who they are. But they, um, the man who killed the kids and the teachers in uh, in Newtown, um, you know, his dad is the vice president of General Electric. And he was getting help, therapy. Um, and uh, so again, just like with these other things we're talking about here tonight, no one thing is going to stop this right. problem Absolutely. in this country that we live in. Right. And, um, but, but we don't want to not do something because it won't be the answer. And I think that you know, we, our, our universal health care, which we still don't have, right. um, as good as many of the provisions are in the Mr. Obama's bill, uh, but mental <laughs> just gets left out of the discussion every time. Every and, time, and that and has benefits and but, insurance. Uh, and insurance policies yes. are cutting, being cut back on mental health all the time. I'm sure everybody in this audience knows yes. that their coverage is minimal for yes. mental health yes. and getting aggressively attacked when you make a claim. So we need to remember it. I don't want to derail this conversation. No, 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 because we're going to run out of time here because they're going to cut us off. This is a good internet. conversation. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm so going to sit down. But I agree. That's okay. Oh, so I please, know. please don't know. forget this issue. That's all I'm asking today. Okay? Can I, can I just make one quick yes. comment? Clearly, uh, you know, when the NRA uses that term, they're just throwing a vast number of Americans under the bus. The majority of persons who with diagnosed mental illness will not become violent and have not become violent. So to, to, to suggest that this problem is based on some sort of mental illness is just disingenuous and I, you know, I, I resent it, frankly. And I think that the focus should be on the access to the firearm. Not that this situation is to be ignored, we need to do a better job in this country of taking care of people who need help. But let's be clear, it is not mentally ill people who are causing gun violence. I would like to pick it up or not. Everything that you're saying is true, necessary, and needs to be dealt with. What are we doing as a nation? What are we doing as a nation? I voted for Barack Obama, as most of the American people did, because we believe in change. We believe that things can be better, and that it can be better for humankind. Targeted assassination. I understand that there is a kill list, and without any consultation with any of us, with Congress, there are people who are alleged enemies are targeted. This is insanity. It, immoral, illegal, all of these things. If we don't have ethical leadership at the top, I'm thinking Fort Benning, Georgia, School of Assassins. What have we been doing this whole century? Okay. I agree. Uh, well, that's one of the main points of the film. Um, until we change that larger part of who we are, um, we're still going to have uh, this problem. Thank you for bringing it up. Yes, let's, let's move it quickly. Um, thanks, Michael, for marrying the movie and all the others. Uh, I just wanted to kind of shed light on the fear factor that you raised in Bowling Columbine very quickly. And I just want everyone in here to realize that the apathy that we have had towards gun violence has a lot to do with the psychology of crime and how we perceive crime. And it, with that said, when we perceive criminals as a certain race of people and other people as not, 
that's how we start to look at gun violence in a divided way. And we need to look at it from the point that we have lost victims, little black victims, little white victims, little Latino victims. We are losing the potential of America, and that's the way we need to look at it. Thank you. Hi, I just want to raise a question that doesn't seem to come up, so I'm going to bring it up. Uh, we, are, we are doing terrible violence abroad with weapons, and our cops are very heavily armed against us. And when we talk about a ban on assault weapons, I wonder why we never, no one seems to raise the issue of we ought to ban the production of such weapons. It's not any worse to use them. I mean, we, if it's okay to use them on kids, if it's bad to use them on kids in the United States, why isn't it bad to use it on kids in Afghanistan and Iraq? and Nicaragua and other places where they use. And I think we should raise that. It, our moral ground uh, goes away from us if we only want them banned for American kids. I think we need to take the whole arms industry on on that level. Nobody needs weapons like that. Thank you for saying that. Yes, ma'am. Hello, my name is Heather Harrington. And my question is, do you, when can you do something like you did at Kmart? <laughs> I, I just, like, I'm jealous of your power. Like, I meant that you went in there and you brought them there and... No, actually I failed. If you remember, I went there with them and uh, they gave us the runaround for hours and we left and we thought, well, that's that. And then one of the kids said, why don't we just call the media? I know. And you no, but that's what I'm saying though, is that, that um, it, it was all those other cameras. Those cameras are very powerful. They are, but in, you can be the... And you know what I mean? Like somebody, I feel like the power of that, you got the ball rolling but then they were there and they put the yeah. pressure. Well, I, I hope that sometimes it gives people ideas if they see something in the film like that, they'll go and do something like that or, or come up with their own creative idea of what to do. And I'm just, I'm, and I'm just one guy, but it's, it's, um, I'm sure everybody in here has, has some really great ideas you could do. Film it, if this was great about, you know, there was no YouTube when I made this yeah. in 2002. Right, right? There, was, there was none of the social media, there was a little, I don't think that Google didn't even think even existed, did it? In 2002? 2001, 2002? Yeah, just for a few lucky people in the Bay Area. So, <laughs> no, you're right. But now, I'm just saying anybody can make your own YouTube. You could go and mess with the gun manufacturers. You can go You can go to Newtown, Connecticut, which is the national headquarters of the lobbying organization for all the gun manufacturers in America. Do you know this? The, the, the national headquarters, uh, for the, it's called the a National uh, Gun Manufacturers Association. NSSF, um, yeah, what they call yeah, shooting sports. Uh, they're national headquarters, and they're they're the top lobbyists for the manufacturers. They're like so NRA is like number one. This group's number two. Headquarters Newtown, Connecticut. So I mean, there's many ideas and things that I think everybody in here and people watching at home could do. Put it on YouTube. I don't want I don't want you to feel like you don't have power. I mean, I just want to say I joined every organization. I've done like, but when I see that. Like, I see the film and I see the media attention. I'm like, images, things like of that sort. People don't want that PR. Like, but how but do I organize this point that? Is you so, what I'm, so, yeah, what I, so what I'm suggesting is that the victories that we won on every issue, gun violence included, have happened because people have owned the power. That they, they, they've owned their voice. They went and told their story directly to the powers that be in whatever issue area they're fighting. So the students that joined Michael at Kmart, that's one example. The Move On members in Western Virginia who joined Lori and others to protest at the NRA on the 14th of every month. The Move On members in South Carolina who come together to advocate against uh, Senator Lindsey Graham on his stances on gun violence. These are people that have all the regular people like you and I that have owned their power. We all we can we can make a difference. And so I appreciate Michael's work as well. And but we all can do the same and even more by owning the power that we have. Just want everyone to remember that. Plus, I want to make some romantic comedies. So, um, <laughs> I see some of our friends are here from uh, from Newtown. Hello. Um, I watched Boeing for Columbine in, in Australia ten years ago. And when it came for for my husband and I, and my family, and my two boys to move to the states from Australia, it was very much on my mind. It was one of the first things I thought about when we were going to choose a place to live. It was, it was actually this very movie, Bowling for Columbine. Because in Australia, as it, even the movie 
uh, said, in 1996, there was a horrible massacre, but our conservative government had sweeping changes within eight weeks. Ban on all semi-automatic semi rifles, ban on or, uh, universal background checks, instituted 28-day waiting periods, and since that date, not there had a, prior to that date of 1996, there had been 13 mass incidents in Australia within the last prior 18 years. Since 1996, not one, not one mass incident in Australia. And the the uh, death by gun rate has dropped 50 percent. The death by gun suicide rate has dropped by 50 percent since then. So when, when, we, when we're moving to the States, as I said, this movie was on, on my mind for the safety of my children. And so I looked and I spent a year searching and researching for what I believe was try to find that one place in America that would be immune to this problem. And I did an ungodly amount of research. I talked on, on web chats with other mothers um, to find the place that I thought had the best schools and the safest area. And I found that place to be Newtown, Connecticut. And it did. It had the lowest crime rate, just you know, absolutely insignificant, and wonderful, wonderful schools. So when, they, when we woke up that morning to an email alert from our school district telling us that one of the schools had a shooter in our district, not even telling us which school. And we had two boys in the school system. It was the most ironic, unbelievable experience of my worst nightmare coming to life. And in the days after, I realized that if this could happen in Newtown, really, it can happen in any town in America because having lived in Newtown, it is the least likely town. It is the most wonderful community, the safest area, culturally, you know, rich, um, just close community, people that would do anything for you. And when, I, when we realized, when I realized that, I realized that, again, I'm not a political person. I was a, I'm a teacher, I'm an educator, I love the arts, I believe that cha changing people was through education, and that is true, and I still believe that. But there has to be a minimum of protection provided legislatively in, in every developed country in the world, including this one. And that is... And that is why we, you know, my husband and I, you know, prior to 1214, we, as we call it, we don't call it Newtown because Newtown's the town we love. We call it 1214. Prior to that day, I'd never signed a petition. I'd never marched in a march. I'd never gone to a rally. I'd never written to a senator. Since 1214, I've done all those things multiple times. And enough is enough and, and everyone we speak to says the same and it's so true as, as Michael has said we are in the majority and if we if we speak up we will be heard and there's midterms coming and I really you know would like to warn America's congressmen and senators that the majority look at the polls you know, don't you're in a bubble in Washington we went to Washington they're in a, we personally went and spoke to senators with another group from Newtown called Newtown Action that we've joined. And they're in a bubble and they don't realise the tide has turned. And if they, if they don't do something now and this year, they will not be there next year to do anything else. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very powerful. Thank you for coming down here and sharing that with us. Um, I think we're out of time um, here. I'm sorry, do we have another internet question? Or? Okay, we'll take one more internet question here. Uh, my name is Jeff Merritt. I work for uh, New York City Public Advocate Bill Blasio and with a great grassroots group called Occupy the NRA. I just wanted, I want to echo the points here about that we do have tremendous power, everyone here. 
And we have to look at the source of the money behind the gun industry. And I encourage you, one of the things that we started to do is we looked at our public pension funds. And we found that here in New York, we had $18 million invested in these gun uh, companies. And we said, no, we're taking that money out. And we did. California has done the same. Chicago has done the same. Philadelphia has. And you should look at where the money is. Look at your investment. You can go to a website that is wallstreetforchange.com. You can see some of the nation's largest uh, institutional investors and also hedge funds that are holding millions and millions of dollars in money and that are profiting off of this tragedy. And Occupy the NRA will be doing a number of actions in the, the weeks and months ahead to make sure that those hedge funds understand that this is blood money and that, that uh, they need to pull their money out of that, uh, these industries as well until changes are made. Thank you so much for doing that. That's a, a great idea. Okay, we are we are out of time. I'm so sorry, uh, uh, Garland. Right, we should uh, uh, start to yeah, it's because the theater has to uh, be cleared. Um, Laura, did you want to just close out here? And uh, I'll just say thanks to everybody, myself, for coming here, and um, and let's uh, let's leave committed to act. Go ahead. Please. Just thank you for coming and also thank you for supporting. I, I feel like nights like this are so important where people can get together and share their energy and share their commitment. And culture is important. Maybe make some more films. If Michael wants to make romantic comedy, maybe you should make the next film. But um, we have to find a way to engage together like this. And I'm just so happy everyone came out tonight. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you everybody across America who's watching.